guys, welcome to Treadmill Review Guru. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Soul SB900. This is a very quiet, comfortable bike. It's well built. We love that Soul has it priced just barely under $1,000, so it's a very good bike um, for the price. It's very affordable. You have magnetic resistance here, so it's very quiet. There's no friction points, uh, and it doesn't require electricity. So you can see there's no plug. The console is battery powered, and it syncs via Bluetooth with the cadence sensor in the wheel to transmit your data to the, the console. Um, so you can use it with third-party apps and it doesn't have a lot of extra tech you have to worry about. So let's take a closer look at who it's best suited for. So this bike is probably best suited for people who are looking for something affordable. There are a lot of bikes on the market that have updated tech and lots of cool features and integrated feel, but you're gonna pay about double for the bike. So that's just something to consider. Um, this bike is very reasonably priced and it's very durable and quiet. So you do get the magnetic resistance. Um, when I move that flywheel, it doesn't make any noise. So it's very quiet regardless of the resistance that you're on. So it's a great option for people who need something quiet and who need something with a compact footprint, doesn't take up much room. That's really nice. You can pretty much use it anywhere, apartment, um, even a shared bedroom or whatever. Um, you do have hybrid pedals. So you can use it with, a, um, with SPD clips or flat pedals if you want. Um, so it would work with an athletic shoe. So you have both options, that's really nice. And it's really good for people who don't want to pay for a monthly subscription. You don't want the app, you don't want to pay for the app, you don't want to worry about the app, you want to do your own thing on your own bike. This is perfect. Um, it's probably not best for people who want an app. If you want that integrated experience and you want the latest tech, which is really cool, they've got some really neat features um, built into some of these uh, bikes and apps that we see now, well, this doesn't offer that. You can use a third party app, but it's not gonna sync with the bike. So it'll just kind of function separately. And um, one other thing is it does have magnetic resistance, but you don't have any resistance levels. So if you're the kind of person that wants to know what level of resistance you're on, this doesn't quite give that to you. You can increase the resistance, but it's all by feel. You kind of take it up as much as you want and then drop it back down and take it up. So just kind of a few things to give you an idea of about who this is best suited for. Let's take a look at the construction on the SB900. Um, this has, it's very st stable. You've got a nice steel frame at the bottom and that really holds it securely on the floor. Um, you have front and rear level stabilizers that just kind of hold that bike down. And then underneath you have adjustable levelers. You've got two on the back and two on the front. So you can screw them up or down depending on the level of your floor and just make sure that there's no rock to that bike. So we love having adjustable levelers. Um, you do have the hybrid pedals, as I mentioned. So you see you've got your SPD clip right there, or you can just use a standard athletic shoe on this side. And these pedals are metal, um, so they're not gonna crack, they're not gonna break, and they should support pretty much any size shoe, any rider. So you have both options, which is nice. You have a belt drive here. So rather than a chain, you've got a belt, which is much quieter, and you also have your protective drive cover, which just kind of keeps dust and toys out and just protects that drive. Um, and then you have magnetic resistance here. So this is your resistance knob up here. You can turn it up to increase resistance, turn it down to decrease resistance. Um, and right here, you have magnets that are positioned adjacent to the flywheel. And as you increase resistance, those magnets move down closer to the flywheel and they resist just via polarity, the rotation of that flywheel. So there's no friction. There's nothing to wear out. There's nothing that needs to be maintained. It doesn't make any noise. Um, so magnetic resistance is just kind of your high-end resistance. That's what you see on your higher-end bikes, and you do get that on this bike. So you've got a 48-pound flywheel down here, and as I mentioned before, the weight of a flywheel does really affect how the pedal stroke feels. Um, you want a heavier flywheel. So it does make the bike a little heavier, but once you're on it and you're pedaling, these weighted flywheels, and you can, you can even say this is perimeter weighted, which means that some of the weight is on the outside of the flywheel, which just enables that fluid, very fluid stroke. And then the weight of the flywheel builds up inertia as it spins so that it's very fluid. If you don't have a sufficiently weighted flywheel, 
then when you rotate the pedals, it can feel jerky down here on the bottom as you lose momentum and pull back up. So the nice thing about having a weighted flywheel is it's a very smooth pedal stroke. The one drawback is the pedals will keep spinning because you do have inertia built up in that flywheel um, as you stop pedaling. So they've added a brake right here. So here's your brake and that will stop your, your pedals if by any chance they start to spin ahead of you. So you've got four adjustment points on this bike, which I really like. I love having multiple adjustment points. It makes it so that you can find a good fit for riders of all sizes. Um, so right here, these are pop pins, and these are actually not my favorite method of adjustment, but they do allow you to um, just kind of customize it so that you can find the right spot, and then you can move these handles out of the way. So let me show you right here. So in order to adjust it, I'll do this one. You want to release, and then slide the saddle or the seat post or whatever forward and back like that and then you reset it now let's say i don't want that sticking out like that i just pull it out and i can move it down and that doesn't affect the tension so that's how those pop pins work is that they allow you to adjust it and then you can make sure that this handle is out of your way by pulling it out and moving it where you want so you can move the seat up and down which is really nice um, and this seat goes really high, so let me show you real quick. I tightened it up there really good, uh, but you can pull it all the way up. It comes up here. That's your max seat height. So you can see that's, that's really high. And then the seat will shift forward and back. The handlebars do the same thing. I have them set to their highest point right here. So they'll raise this much, and then you can shift the handlebars forward and back as well. So this is the adjustment point that's different. A lot of bikes have um, two adjustment points on the saddle up and then fore and aft. And most bikes will allow you to raise and lower those handlebars. But a lot of the bikes that have the screen attached to the front have cabling inside. And so you can't shift those handlebars forward and back. Um, the advantage is for taller riders who have long legs, sometimes if those handlebars are set too far forward, even if you raise that seat and move it all the way back, your knees can come really pretty close to the front of those handlebars, especially when you're riding up out of the saddle in second, third position. Um, so just something to be aware of. It's really nice to be able to shift those handlebars back if you need it. The overall footprint of this bike. So it really doesn't take up much space. It's only 21 inches wide. So very narrow. You can just kind of tuck it in a corner um, out of the way wherever you want. To the top of the tablet holder is 42 inches and your total length is 40 inches. So this really is pretty compact and very quiet it will support up to 300 pounds of user weight. So it's a good option for most riders. And it weighs about 160 pounds, as I mentioned, a lot of that is the flywheel and the steel frame, um, but it does have front wheels. So you can just lift it back here, engage those front wheels and roll it as you need to, um, just kind of for ease and convenience if you need to move it. Soul covers the SB900 with a very impressive warranty. You get a full lifetime warranty on the frame, um, and that just kind of reflects the company's confidence in the overall structure and durability of this bike. You get a three-year warranty on electronics and parts, and then one year on labor. All right, so you can see here's your console, and it is battery operated. So you don't have to have electricity to ride this bike, which is really nice. It also does not require a subscription app. Um, the console reflects your metrics. So it is a data display screen, but there's no programs in here. I can't choose an interval program or a calorie or hill climb or whatever. There's nothing programmed into it. It just reflects your metrics. So you can see right here, I've got my RPMs at the top. Um, calories is right here. Over here is a heart display. I'll show you that in a second. And then down here is just kind of time. So that's looking for, this will sync with a Bluetooth chest strap. It's not included, but if you have one, it will sync and then your heart rate will be displayed right there. Uh, calories, and this is my present speed. There's my distance um, and my time on the bike. And then that's just kind of preset to standard time of day. It always starts at noon um, and we haven't set it. So that's your whole screen and you do have to hit start to get it to power up, but it will power off once you're no longer pedaling. It will time out after a few minutes. So that's your console. You can see up here, I have a um, cycling program running on the, the iPad, and this is not integrated with the bike. So I don't get any data metrics 
on this screen, like as far as cadence or resistance or anything like that. It just provides me um, the option of being engaged and following an instructor while I'm writing. So the tablet holder is nice and it does have that adjustable clip there at the top. Uh, to hold that tablet, you can watch Netflix, you could read a book, you could do whatever you want on your tablet um, while you're writing, which is really nice. It's just not gonna be integrated with the bike. So just something to consider. Um, the other thing with this console is the screen right here is three inches by four inches. So it's a little, it's a little uh, smaller than you might see, but you can adjust it. So depending, oh, I just bumped it and it timed out. Well, depending on your angle, you can adjust it for that. Um, and you don't have to have internet to work this. So you don't have to have a Wi-Fi signal or anything like that to make it work. Let's look at the functionality of the SB900. So your step over height right here, I measured it, is only about 25 inches. So it's really easy to get up and over the bike. It does require a little bit of hip and knee mobility. Um, just be aware, but it's 25 inches isn't terrible. Uh, your span here is about 14 inches. So this brake lever that sticks out, the kind of a tongue, I don't love it. I don't, I don't love it. Most of them will allow for you to push down on that resistance knob to act as a brake. So this is a little bit of a different design. It doesn't really get in your way, but it's just kind of something to be aware of. And then your resistance knob is right here. So I've adjusted this bike kind of how I like it and found the right fit. Um, so I want to demo just kind of that resistance and how it sounds. I do just have regular athletic shoes on today, but you can use this with SPD cycling shoes if you would like, which is really nice. Um, and as you can see, you've got nice wide handlebars up here with multiple positions. So I can drop down into an arrow position and just kind of hinge at the hips for more aggressive riding. Um, you can come up into first position and keep your chest more upright. And then you can also stand up, ride in second, out in third, and you've got just lots of space there on the handlebars, which is nice. Some of the handlebars that we've used are a little narrower, which works fine for me, but for bigger riders with wider shoulders, it's nice to have that option to just keep your shoulders, wrists, and elbows all in alignment with a little bit wider handlebars. These handlebars aren't super padded, so they do have a resistance coating on them, so they won't dent or break or scratch or get nicked or anything and they're sweat proof, um, but they're not quite as comfortable as some of the others that I've used. So you might want to throw a towel over or something like that while you're riding. A lot of people do that anyway, just to kind of absorb the sweat. So just a few things to be aware of with functionality. Um, let me demo the resistance for you. So you've got a resistance knob right down here and it's, it's an easy reach. Even if your seat is moved up, they've kind of positioned that directly under the handlebars in such a way that you don't have to really reach down to grab it. And then you just turn it right to increase that resistance and turn it left to decrease the resistance. So it is magnetic resistance. So there's no friction points and it's very quiet. So let me turn it all the way down. So that's the lowest level and I'm just gonna pedal for a minute. So actually most of the noise that I hear is from my leg rubbing against the saddle. The saddle has fabric on it. And so there's just a little bit of noise as my leg moves along that saddle, but the resistance, the flywheel doesn't really make any noise. So let me turn it up. So you can see that resistance is heavier, but there's no more noise. I'll stand up. I'll add even a little more. Take it out to third. Still no noise. So this is pretty practically silent. Let me drive it down. All right, the other thing you do have, like I said, there's no resistance levels. It's just kind of by feel. So that is one thing I don't love, but at least, at least you've got that resistance knob right there. And then you do have a brake. So that brake will instantly stop your pedals. So as you can see, the Soul SB900 is a really good bike. Um, there's a lot of features and functionality to like. A few things to be aware of. It does not have a touchscreen, obviously, and it doesn't have an embedded app. 
So uh, that tech just isn't included on this bike. It, it, has a res it has magnetic resistance and a resistance knob, but it doesn't have preset resistance levels. So if you're someone who likes to know exactly what level of resistance you're riding in, this is much more by feel. You just kind of have to turn it up based on um, where you want to be with that resistance. So something else to be aware of. I don't love this tongue for the brake. It just kind of gets in the way of your step over height just a little bit. Uh, so it's not a big deal, but just something to be aware of. And then the handlebars have a good span and you've got lots of different positions, but they're not super soft. You know, you might want to throw a towel over them. So those are just a few things to be aware of, things that we love about this bike. I love how sturdy the bike is and how quiet it is. It's very comfortable. You've got four points of adjustment, so you can find the right geometry for you, find that right bike fit, see, uh, make sure that you're comfortable when you ride. And it just provides lots of options for both smaller riders with shorter legs and tall riders. You saw how high that seat goes when we lift it up. Um, it's very quiet. The magnetic resistance has no friction points and regardless of the resistance that you're at, uh, it's not any more or less noisy. It's just as those magnets move down closer to the wheel, that wheel has more friction or more resistance as it moves, but there's no friction. So that's nice as well. You do have the hybrid pedals. So you can ride this both with um, cycling shoes with an SPD clip, or you can ride just flat with any athletic shoe. So that's nice as well. And as always, cycling is a very low impact workout. So it's really good for people who um, don't wanna run. Maybe you have a little bit of um, joint sensitivity or something else. Cycling is quiet. You can do it indoors at any time. There's, this bike does not require a lot of space. So you could easily use it in a shared room, put it in a bedroom, anything like that. So just lots of things that we really, really like about the SB900. For a full written review, make sure and check us out at treadmillreviewguru.com. For current pricing, click the link in the summary below. And as always, leave a comment. Let us know what you think about the Soul SB900 and if you have any questions, drop them down there as well. If you liked our video, make sure and give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.